Welcome to Trailers from Hell. The first film to feature the appalling treatment of Allied prisoners of war by Japanese troops in World War II was the Oscar-winning The Bridge on the River Kwai, powerfully directed by David Lean, but with the restraint necessary for family audiences. It was a huge success. So Hammer Films, with their taste for taboos, sensed the British public might be ready for a graphic atrocity outrage movie. And they were right. The Camp on Blood Island, promoted by a lurid campaign, was one of the most successful British films of 1958, despite uniformly negative reviews criticizing its racism and gratuitous brutality. In fact, the novelization of the film actually sold two million copies. Hammer understood its audience. Twice Yamamitsu has told me, quite dispassionately, that he will murder every man, woman, and child on this island and raise both camps to the ground if Japan loses the war. Andre Morel plays the camp's senior British officer with perfect stiff upper lipmanship. According to Hammer's publicity, the film was based on an actual POW revolt where Allied prisoners seized weapons and attacked their captors. Blood Island's co-writer-director was Val Guest, who directed 55 movies, 16 of them for Hammer, Quatermass 2 and The Day the Earth Caught Fire being my two favourites. The Malayan prison camp, dotted with fake palm trees and foreground jungle foliage, was created on the Bray Studios' backlot and in the sand pits of Gerard's Cross. Monochrome photography by Jack Asher, Hammer's best cameraman, helped to disguise the British countryside. All the cast were oiled and greased to look sweat-drenched by tropical heat. The film has an authentic look. What lets the credibility down is the casting of obviously British actors wearing eye makeup in the Japanese roles. The Camp on Blood Island was a passion project for Val Guest, who numbered many traumatized survivors of Japanese POW camps among his friends. Their stories so appalled and angered me, he said, I had to make this film. From the first scene where a man is forced to dig his own grave before being machine-gunned into it, Guest pulls no punches. A sense of righteous indignation underscores the film. But commentators accused Hammer of rubbing salt into a war wound for profit. Perhaps to atone, or at least offer balance. Hammer's next war movie, Yesterday's Enemy, dealt with British atrocities in the Burma campaign. Val Guest returned as director. <laughs>